Hi guys, this is Jason here from the Nathaniel School of Music. And this is a tip for all of you who use MIDI and uh, <coughs> who use virtual instruments to write your music. And uh, the way I've come from that uh, scene is basically I do both. I do a, a, a lot of acoustic instruments like piano, uh, trumpet, guitar and drums. And I also work with a lot of synthesizers. <coughs> so the way i approach it is uh is to think of the final end product which is the mixing stage where you have to add effects like reverb and before that you you need to add eqs and compressors so while you do that to audio quite effectively it's not very common to do it to midi and to all your midi data like the virtual instruments you record primarily because they take up a lot of system resources and <coughs> they are created on tracks where you cannot really do a lot of tweaking. You'll have to do a lot of the tweaking in the application itself. So for this demo, I've done, I've created a small set of patches in structure which comes with Pro Tools. It's made by Air. And it's nothing but a sample player. Uh, other sample players could be uh, contact by native instruments or EXS24, which comes with Logic. So this is a nice one which works in Pro Tools as well as other DAWs. So what I've done is I've made five patches. There's a string section here, which is legato. Then a staccato string section, a tremolo, a pizzicato, and a choir. <coughs> so all of these five patches or all of these five sounds exist in one plugin right now. And I've saved it as a patch called strings here. So for me to recall it, it's as simple as loading up structure again and loading up that patch again. So once these five patches are out, uh, are set up, you can route those patches either to different MIDI tracks or MIDI channels or to different audio channels. And I've done both, as you can see here. The, the purple color <coughs> tracks which you see here are all your MIDI, uh, are all your MIDI channels mi or MIDI tracks. So if I go over each one this is the legato and this is the staccato and as i'm playing each one you'll see the meter light up for each track or for each patch this is the tremolo tremolo pizzicato and the choir <coughs> so the way it works is each of these is going out through a different midi channel so I've sent it out through one, two, three, four, and five. And then I've made five MIDI tracks, label them accordingly. And there's a useful shortcut in Pro Tools. You hold Command, Option, and Shift, and it'll apply an incremental uh, value to <coughs> a particular selection. So. If I go over to channel 1 and hold command, option and shift, it's going to increment it from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And uh, yeah, all you have to do is select each track. And the audio of that, the reason why you hear it is because it's routed through separate aux tracks here, which are called legato, staccato, tremolo and so on. Um, <coughs> now you may be wondering why didn't I use instrument tracks which are a combination of MIDI and AUX tracks in Pro Tools and that's a nice feature <coughs> and with Pro Tools 11 you get 128 of them but the reason why I chose <coughs> against the instrument tracks is so that I could do a lot of things I could do some MIDI editing 
uh, or I could <coughs> change the sound if I wanted to and uh, also add effects to them later. For instance, I could go over to this patch, Legato patch and add an equalizer. rolling off the lows and that will happen. So it's as though this is an audio track right now and so while mixing it's quite easy because I look at this as audio and all my MIDI work happens here. In fact if I go back to the edit window I have recorded a, a short performance. There are five tracks right now. Let's give it a listen. And for those of you who want to follow the, uh, the chords, the chords are right here. When we edit this, you're editing MIDI, but you're hearing it out through these aux tracks here. And that's again happened through structure where you send out MIDI and you send out audio. So I've sent it out from 2 to 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So I've created 5 aux tracks. And the input of each aux track is not coming from a bus because the bus only receives, sends and receives audio. Here we are sending and receiving MIDI information and the sound is coming through structure. So the input has to be plug-in and you will see structure and you will see the five outputs of structure. These are audio outputs so I choose two, three, four, five and six respectively which are mapped to these respective patches. So what's cool is I'm not blending the sounds in structure. For instance, if I play this back, I'm not adjusting all this here. I have a bit more control by doing it in the Pro Tools mixer window, which is where you would want to ideally do your mixing. So I can balance all my levels here as well as spatially move them around as well. So let's try doing that here with the auxiliary tracks. And remember, this has nothing to do with this stuff here because this is just MIDI data. we could make the choir a bit brighter, add an EQ, roll off some of the low end of the choir. Sounds quite nice and you could put in a compressor, you could add reverb, <coughs> it's, it's just like you're uh, doing a normal mix uh, but all the sounds are coming from this one plugin right here and uh, if you'll notice I've not uh, made this as an instrument track as well. I've made it as an aux track and on the aux track I've put structure and it's sending to MIDI tracks and then sending the audio to 
different aux tracks as well so i have not used a single instrument track for this uh, for this tutorial you could however make instrument tracks and uh, that that will also definitely work out fine but for for this video i've decided to just use aux tracks as it seems to be working out quite fine uh this is also a nice way to probably compose your music as a keyboardist or producer because all all of your parts are very simple to manage your sounds are coming from one place your performance or your midi data is coming from one place you can also look at your score for the performance via the score editor feature in pro tools and all your audio is coming from another place so i kind of like the way how this system works because uh, a lot of these patches uh, could come in the way of your creativity so it's good to set them up store them as a preset and then work with your midi and then once the midi job is done you could then focus on the audio while mixing and if for whatever reason you want to save up on your uh, system resources which is very important uh, you could easily bounce all of these sounds as separate audio files so let's say you you've put in a bunch of effects um, eqs compressors and reverbs delays and and what not and you want to free your computer from uh <coughs> from the burden of having to handle all of these plugins this is another tip which could help you if your computer is getting a bit taxed you could again hold down that shortcut which i mentioned earlier command option shift and send all of these auxes through different buses 7 8 9 10 there are two of them because these are stereo tracks and if i play them you see the meters move but you hear nothing because they are going out through buses so what i could do i could right click on any of the outputs and just say bounce bus 7 and 8 and uh make sure that when you bounce it <coughs> the it's bouncing it at the same bit depth and sample rate of the original session so i could call this legato audio or maybe legato bounced and there's an option here which you might want to tick it's called import after bounce now this is a pro tools 11 only feature so if you guys have earlier versions of pro tools like version 9 or 10 or before this will not work because it doesn't support the offline bouncing features which pro tools 11 has so if i hit bounce does the job quite quickly with my effect added and i create a new track and there we go what you're hearing now is just audio it's not playing from structure you're hearing just audio so yeah uh, maybe if you have to give the file to another engineer or a, a mix engineer you could send them audio stems of the whole thing and it bounces it from the beginning till the end of the project which is really cool uh, the only thing you can't do uh, is to do a multiple stem bounce which is a feature only in pro tools 11 hd so for those of you who are not using the hd version well i am not i am using the normal version for those of you who are using the hd version you can do a multiple stem bounce as well so hope you found the tutorial useful and for those of you who are composing and want to make quick changes your parts maybe you want to preview the legato 
let me just go back to my default system outputs you could hit record enable on each of these tracks you hear everything a neat shortcut for that would be command up arrow and down arrow command down arrow goes right and up arrow goes left right so hope you guys found that tutorial useful again this is jason here from the nathaniel school of music catch you soon <laughs>